Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is I just wanted to show you what the superheat and the subcooling look like when you have an R410 ITXV on an R22 system. So we have an R22 outdoor condensing unit for air conditioning only. Uh, we have it attached to a air handler inside with an R410 ITXV. They're all size three ton. So the condenser is three tons, TXV is three tons, and the evaporator coil is three tons. So in reference to superheat, if you look at the low side gauge, we have a pressure of about 81 PSIG. And we're gonna bring that in to the green inner ring and you see we're at about 49 degrees saturated R22 temperature at the indoor evaporator coil. On the T2, we have 49 degrees and that's attached to the suction line. So that's telling us that we have basically zero superheat. So this temperature on the suction line should be higher than what we are reading on the gauge right here. So once again, it's the green inner ring and right now we're reading about 49 degrees and presently we're reading total superheat. Total superheat may even pick up a couple extra degrees on the way um, for the refrigerant coming back out to the outdoor unit. But that's dangerous because basically what happens is the compressor needs to have vapor refrigerant and if it does not have superheat then it doesn't actually have complete vapor. Uh, it can actually have a mix, a saturated refrigerant still. At the evaporator coil the refrigerant is supposed to basically get superheated before it comes out. So now let's check subcooling. So we read 86 degrees here and this should be lower than what we read here and we're reading 94 degrees. So 94 minus 86 we have about 8 degrees of subcooling, so 7 to 8 degrees of subcooling. The unit's calling for 8 degrees, so that is actually good. So remember that your subcooling has to do with the outdoor unit, so that should be basically the same as normal, but that would depend on how much refrigerant you have in the system. So let's just talk about the TXV, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this outdoor unit off because, once again, the compressor might be getting liquid coming into the vapor compressor and that would damage the compressor. So you have three things at play with a TXV, and one is the bulb pressure. So the bulb pressure pushes downwards as the spring pressure on the bottom and the external equalization pressure push up. The TXV's job is to maintain a superheat of roughly about 10 to 14 degrees uh, for air conditioning. So if we're reading the total superheat, which is taken at the outdoor unit, it may even be 16 degrees or something like that. So what's happening here is when you have an R410 TXV on an R22 system, you're actually reading a very low external equalization pressure. So because of that, the bulb is forcing the TXV to open up almost fully. It's, it's really opening up so that you barely don't have any superheat. In this case, we had zero degrees of superheat, but you could have maybe slightly negative superheat. You could have just one or two degrees of superheat. So I just wanted to go over that with you real quick, just in the rare instance that you do run into that on a service call. Um, but mainly that would happen if somebody wasn't paying attention uh, during a change out or something like that. So that TXV would definitely need to be changed out for an R22 TXV. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to look at air conditioning and heat pump charging videos, the playlist is right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.